Hey everybody, it's Paul from Legacy Lumber and in this video I'm going to give you a description of how our radio frequency vacuum kiln works. We just unloaded it this morning and uh, time is of the essence. We like to unload and load it right away so we're actually loading it already. So we've caught it kind of, not about halfway, but about a quarter of the way done. There's four layers that we're going to load in here. So we're going to have a look now. This is the vacuum kiln that you see in the background. And what it is, is a, uh, about a 20 foot long chamber that can fit a timber cart about 16 and a half feet long. So you can see here on our timber cart, it's always a jigsaw puzzle. So we have two bools of Canadian black walnut that are about eight to eight and a half feet long. That way we add up to our 16 to 16 and a half total length that we have available in the kiln. So sometimes it's a little bit more hard when we have a 12 foot long bool and then we kind of have another four feet, four and a half feet that we got to make up, which we'll usually do with some cookies uh, or some shorter material, maybe some coffee table type material. But in this case, we have some beautiful three inch thick. This is all salvaged Canadian black walnut. All of our lumber comes from local tree service companies. So they're already being cut down. We then sawmill it here on site and for the three inch walnut, we like to air dry it for four to six months to give it optimal color, as well as even in the vacuum kiln, it's gonna have a little bit better moisture content. So a lot of people will say, well, what's a vacuum kiln? There's a few different kinds of them. This one specifically is a radio frequency vacuum kiln. And basically what that means is that there's a chamber that all the wood's gonna slide into, the door is gonna close, and then we're gonna initiate a vacuum pump which will suck out the majority of the oxygen. By doing that, we're removing the atmosphere pressure and we're able to vaporize water at a much lower temperature. Out in the standard atmosphere here, we're about 101 kPa. Inside the kiln, once we turn the vacuum on, I'm gonna pull it down to about seven to 10 kPa, which will boil water or vaporize water at around uh, 38 degrees to say 42 degrees. As the wood dries out, I'll raise the vacuum up a little bit to get to higher temperatures. But in general, you'll have lower temperatures in a vacuum kiln drying. The other advantages are that it holds the material very, very flat. Inside the kiln, we can see if we come here, this is the chamber. We have a hydraulic press that's gonna push down on the wood and as the wood dries, it will actually adjust and apply more pressure. This is the top of the, the chamber and I've actually had wood slide in here literally touching this top and after the week or two weeks of drying it's about three to four inches lower so that's how much the wood will shrink over about a four foot tall kiln cart so in the vacuum kiln we have these plates we can see them here and this is actually going to transfer the radio frequency from a plate to the other plate and the wood is in between um, what we're trying to achieve with that is that the electricity that's flowing from plate to plate is actually uh, shaking the water molecule at about 6,800 times per second. That creates friction and that creates heat. We need that heat energy to warm the wood up and then to a certain temperature to be able to boil that water away. So on our kiln cart, we're gonna have a negative sheet, which is the whole body of the kiln. And then we're gonna load on about nine inches, 10 inches thick of wood and then we're gonna have another sheet. Once we put that sheet on, this is gonna be the positive sheet. And basically, it's not connected to the negative sheet, but it is flowing electricity between the negative and positive, shaking that water molecule, which is then generating the heat. Side effect of this is that the wood is actually drying from the inside out. So when we start drying, we'll actually have the outside of the wood will be almost in like a steam bath, a really nice environment for the wood, not necessarily for us, because there's gonna be no oxygen in there, and wouldn't be pretty if we hopped in the chamber. But for the wood, the lack of oxygen and the uh, hydraulic press, all is a whole system to keep the wood flat during drying and restrict the defects, basically. Speed is the third kind of side effect of the vacuum kiln, in that we can take this three inch wood, which is generally about 30% moisture content now, probably a little higher, because that's right on the outside, probably more in the 40, 45 range. Uh, we're able to dry this in about eight to 10 days through this vacuum kiln with virtually no, uh, no degrade in the wood, which is pretty awesome. So it's, uh, it's an exciting tool to have that we have here at Legacy Lumber. And uh, we'll do some more follow-up videos, get a little bit more in-depth on how this machine works. 
but basically this is what we do every uh, eight to ten days we load the vacuum kiln and we unload the vacuum kiln and you can check out the wood here this is cut on our custom sawmill up top these can be some beautiful computer desks put a pair of these together uh, you got a really nice dining table or it's ready to become your bar top and have some drinks all right so we've spent pretty much the whole day reloading the vacuum kiln it's a lot quicker uh, unloading usually than loading it because when you do load it it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle and you want really good contact wood to wood surface so uh, as we can see here we have about four feet of total height we also have about four feet of width and then the cart itself is 16 and a half feet long so we've maximized our yield pretty good we have an eight foot bool an eight foot bool two more eight footers then we have i guess a pair of tens or twelves i forget uh, i think actually 11 footers and then right here we made up the extra space with some four and a half five foot long slabs so i always try and maximize the amount of wood that goes in here because the amount of electricity it uses is going to be the same so the cost to dry the wood it just makes sense to put as much in as you can and we're going to roll it in right now so let's let's do it so i'm just having a look at the wires as we roll it in that nothing's catching or bumping it out of the way because we do have these two plates are going to be a positive signal and the top middle and bottom is a negative signal so we don't want uh, those plates interacting in a way uh, that we don't, uh, we just don't want any shorts basically is what's going on. So it's got to make sure all the cables are properly. Everything's looking good. So the whole timber cart's been rolled in. What controls the drying process is the temperature of the moisture in the wood. So we're going to drill a hole in a single slab. Typically I do it in the, the biggest slab, the longest one, because it's going to have the most moisture for the, the longest time. So I'm going to drill my hole. This will be good here even. This is our thermometer, which you want to be careful and not drive your timber cart over because you cut it in half, which has happened uh, twice. But we've repaired it. Maybe time for a new cable soon. So we're going to insert our probe. That's in there. And you just want to ensure that this cable, this is a positive plate, this one. You just want to ensure that this cable is nowhere close to that because it can get zapped actually. So from here, we look pretty good. On the top here, this right here is a hydraulic platen that's going to push and hold the wood down. Uh, the entire time as it drives. Mitch is going to turn that on now so we can look up top here. So you can see how that's going to hold the wood flat and as the wood shrinks it's going to continuously add pressure and try and keep the wood as flat as we can. We're going to go ahead, we're going to close up the door now. So big crazy heavy door. One last look, make sure everything's okay. Oh, you know what? In my haste here I actually forgot something. So the cart, the final connections is that it gets grounded to the body. Uh, they're one of many grounding spots, but this is the last one that you can do with it uh, in this condition. So now we're ready. We double checked everything and we did notice something we didn't hook up. So we're going to close up the door. Boom. Got our submarine type handles. And I get it a little tightened. So if we go inside here, I'll actually show you the control panel to operate the kiln. So this is the, the brains behind the whole operation, I guess. This is a 20,000 watt microwave, and this also controls the vacuum pressure as well as the temperatures. So it has a touch screen here that we can touch, it lights up. The load that we just took out of the kiln had 152 hours of heating time. So probably that was in there for six days of heating time, but actually the load was in there for eight days. So it just shows you it does shut on and off as it reaches its max temperature. It drained about 700 liters of water out of the last load. We don't care about all of that now though because we want to erase it. So I can come in here, I got a bunch of settings. We can go right in here, we can go reset the data. Are you sure? Yes. It's going to ask us again. Data reset. We're all reset back to zero. And then in here, I can set my min and max temperature. So when I'm doing three inch thick walnut, I'm gonna have my max temperature at about 40 degrees Celsius, and I'll have a low of about 38 degrees. So this machine is gonna heat up to 40 degrees Celsius. Once it hits that, it'll shut off and then cool down until 38, and then turn back on and heat to 40, and it's gonna repeat that. Throughout the eight to 10 day cycle, I'll be raising those temperatures along the way. There's also a vacuum pressure which we're in an atmosphere of 101 kPa, and I'm gonna be pulling it down initially to nine kPa, and then it will rise to 12. Again, the vacuum pump will kick on and uh, pull it back down to nine, and it'll cycle just like that. So I'm gonna confirm this, and we're going to hit the start button. So this is gonna turn on a fan, I apologize for the noise. So this is turning on the high frequency generator. 
and then it's going to build up some electrical charge. So we have to wait for a few minutes until we can process to the next step. But we're going to see here that the voltage turns on. And then we've got to wait a few minutes for the, to hit this next button. In the meantime, I'm also going to hit the vacuum. So this is going to turn on the vacuum pump. Didn't actually turn on the vacuum pump because I have my air compressor unplugged. So I'm going to go plug my air compressor in. That will turn the vacuum pump on. And then we're going to go from there. In about 8 to 10 days, we're going to have a nice dry uh, load of wood. Along the way, uh, if you don't already follow on Instagram, I do a lot of story times about this machine. So you can kind of glimpse into some of the smaller details of uh, what I'm doing, as well as follow along as this wood's drying. You can see our progress and check it out. So I really appreciate everyone watching the videos that we've been posting. Thanks again. If you want to stay updated, please subscribe. And if you like the video, like. Like it, like it, like it. <laughs> and uh, comment below if you have any questions about this process or uh, if you want to let me know some of the videos you'd like to see us produce, please, um, please comment below. <laughs> All right. <laughs>